Welcome back to another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. I know you might be feeling a little bit shocked right now. We're about to talk about a game that had a Kickstarter back in 2015 that just came out and, uh, oh, there's a lot to talk about. Without any further ado, though, hi, folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, I'm diving into the System Shock remake. So yeah, uh, I mentioned that Kickstarter. It's been a while, quite the rocky road, uh, but is the final product worth the wait? I'm happy to say that in my opinion, it's yes. Again, I said there is a lot to talk about, but yes. The original System Shock was released in 1994, a year after Doom, and it was way ahead of its time. I'm gonna try not to talk too much about the original. Firstly, because I don't need to just tell you how old I am for a uh, full video length. But secondly, because I don't know if comparing the new one to the original makes the most amount of sense as a long-term strategy for this thing. So I am gonna bring it up some, but yeah, you get where I'm coming from. In truth, a lot of people who are interested in this remake probably aren't people who played the original or were even particularly invested in it in any way. It's one of those games that's highly influential, but not the easiest to go back to uh, for a lot of reasons, the controls being the primary one. That being said, there's a whole lot of reasons why the first game was so influential. It's one of the immersive sims, like it inspired Thief, Deus Ex, and of course the Bioshock series, which are by the way, named specifically as a reference to System Shock. The influences don't stop there either. I mean, Dead Space, Prey, these games all have some element that is very clearly derived from System Shock if you're aware of System Shock. It was a really trailblazing game. Now that being said, Development on the System Shock remake was troubled, and that is putting it nicely. I wasn't really ever sure we were going to play this game. As I said right there at the start, we uh, first heard of this remake in 2015 when they launched a Kickstarter to remake the game in Unity, which then they switched over to Unreal, which forced them to start development from scratch. The game was rebooted at least one time since then. Originally, it was going to be a reimagining in which, you know, a much more extensive remake. You start from the concept and build a new game based on the script, based on the world, based on etc. But what we have now is actually a real remake. It is an impressively accurate, staunchly old school version of System Shock. That's not to say it has not been updated. It has, but stay with me on this. The story pretty much like everything else, is directly ported from the original, almost completely. In fact, I honestly, I can't tell really the difference because it's been such a long time, but it seems basically one-to-one. -one. You play as a nameless hacker, world is a standard issue cyberpunk future. You know, you're doing your hacker stuff and you get caught by the Trioptimum Corporation. Uh, they ship you off to a Citadel station and the administrator cuts a deal with you. You get a clean slate if you remove the safeties on the artificial intelligence running the space station called Shodan. Now, I don't know if you've paid any attention to all of the AI panic going on in the world right now, but it's probably not too hard to figure out why you would want to remove the safeties on the AI. So they knock you out, and then the game starts for real. You wake up in a bed in the now abandoned medical wing. The station has been completely taken over by the now malevolent Shodan, uh, and now the only option is to scavenge, survive, and find a way to escape the station. If you played Bioshock, a lot of what you're doing here probably looks familiar. Most of the time, you're just creeping around, bashing in robots, monsters, collecting resources like healing patches, key cards, ammo, upgrades. It's just not under the sea in an objectivist paradise city. It's above the earth in computer hell. But just as Rapture fell, obviously the space station did. So you're going around finding notes and audio logs detailing what happened during the fall of the Citadel station. It's mostly for flavor, but there is some clues about what you should be doing in these notes. Some of them have codes for opening doors, for instance. Um, one really cool feature from the original game that was brought back for this remake is the modular difficulty select. Instead of just giving you blanket easy, normal, and hard, like most games, System Shock lets you choose between combat, mission, which affects your objectives, cyber, which changes how difficult the cyberspace parts of the game are, and puzzle, which makes puzzles easier or harder. It's only recently we've seen games include features like this, so it's pretty impressive uh, to see in a game this old. And yes, it's not just the remake. Uh, the remake changes how some of these difficulty settings work, but they're in the original game. That's part of the original game. 
It is really good that the game gives you options, by the way, because System Shock does not mess around. There are no waypoints on normal, no quests, no mission objectives. You're pretty much just left to figure out what you should be doing, and sometimes that can be super obscure and confuse the hell out of you. The level layouts don't help a massive amount, even with the extremely handy auto map that displays in the corner, navigating the labyrinthian corridors of Citadel Station can be overwhelming, and unless you got a pretty good sense of direction, it's, it's easy to get lost. Of course, the original was way worse about that. The remake does a lot to try to make areas look a little more like functional places and different from each other, but for the most part, the actual level layouts are nearly identical to the original, so most of it is the same. The thing that might catch you off guard is how not scary the game is, though. I mean, it's got a creepy atmosphere, that's by design, but the game really has more the tone of a dungeon crawler rather than a horror game, like the sequel to it, or something like Dead Space, which again is clearly influenced by it. That doesn't mean it can't be scary at times, there are um, scary things in it, the death cutscene can give you chills. Shodan is just a chilling and fantastic villain. It seems like your standard AI run amok bad guy at first, but the game manages to do some pretty clever things with it. Firstly, in that it's clearly batshit insane. Sometimes when AI is the bad guy, it's Hal from 2001 A Space Odyssey with a different voice. Uh, but Shodan is just crazy. They'll appear on monitors in hallways to taunt you, they'll trigger traps, or suddenly cause a bunch of enemies to appear out of a secret elevator in the floor. It really makes it feel like Shodan has complete control of the situation, and you're kind of just slowly chipping away at it. The general flow of the game is that you enter a floor, it starts off swarming with enemies, every door is locked down, and getting around is an absolute pain. You slowly work your way around, you unlock doors, take out security cameras, which lower Shodan's presence on the floor, and you eventually work your way to the CPU cores that are a means to override Shodan's lockdown on the elevator once you destroy. That lets you move to the next floor and thus progress. Each floor also has this thing called a restoration station that you can hack it if you find it. Uh, that makes it so dying on the floor isn't the end. It works basically just like the Vita chamber in Bioshock, but if they aren't online when you die, you get converted into a cyborg member of Shodan's war machine in a cool cutscene that is fun to see once, but gets old. I'm not gonna lie. Enemies do eventually start to reappear after you've cleared them out. Like, Shodan doesn't just let you clear out a floor and be on your way. You'll find new mutants and cyborgs as you explore, so conserving ammo, picking your battles in a smart way, that eventually becomes important. There are healing stations and energy rechargers, but they're not everywhere, so there are parts that you can just go completely nuts because you got free and easy healing available, but there are floors where tools are restricted too, where you're going to be stuck playing a lot more cautiously. But the variety of enemies very impressive. You'll need multiple weapons to deal with those. Electric guns are effective against machines. Ballistics are better against mutants. You get a pretty big arsenal right from the start. And if you have too much, it's even possible to store equipment in a space elevator that'll let you access stuff on other floors. And that's two years before Resident Evil introduced us to the item box. Visually, the game kind of goes for a hybrid art style that I think works for what the game's trying to do. It's got fairly high polygon models and modern graphics effects combined with some chunky texture work that makes the game feel shiny and new while also having a kind of lo-fi aesthetic. It's an interesting choice that some people might not be crazy about, but personally, I think it really works. First off, it makes the game hold up well, and everything's nicely detailed while it feels like the original game, just much nicer. Overall, it's a solid and surprisingly faithful remake of an almost 30-year-old game. A lot of it still really holds up, but there are a few things left that feel old school in a way that's kind of annoying rather than charming. Uh, the controls are a massive improvement on the original, do not get me wrong, but you're still basically required to play this game with a keyboard and mouse. I tried with a controller, uh, it did not go well. Right now, the game is only playable on PC, so it's not that big of a deal, but it's kind of disappointing. Certain aspects of this game just don't work with a controller, like leaning, which is mapped to a stick, but it just doesn't do anything for me. Other important things like the flashlight have to be turned on manually by going to the menu. Quick saving just isn't possible. You gotta use the keyboard. Basically, if the game didn't require quick saving, it would maybe be less of a big deal, uh, but it, it does. Death can come really suddenly in System Shock, and if you didn't save, you're screwed. The game does throw you an autosave every once in a while, but if you rely on autosaves, you're going to easily lose up to half an hour or more if you die. 
and that's a lot of progress to lose. Everything else works okay, but it's pretty clear that the game was meant to be played with a keyboard. Navigating the menu is still a little awkward too. It's 100 times better than the original game, but it can still be a little too complex for my liking. The total lack of any kind of hand-holding is one of these things that's really up to personal preference. There are times I like it, and I feel like the game's respecting me, and other times where I'm totally lost and I just want to move on to the next thing. Um, it's kind of up to your tolerance for old-school design. Overall, I like it, and if you don't want to mess with that, then the game does give an option to just have modern checkpoints, so you can play the game that way if you prefer. Sound design is all around solid. Got some pretty good voice acting for the audio logs. Really cool synth-heavy score that's maybe a little more exciting than dread-inducing. That's, again, a taste thing. You might like that, you might not. Of course, the standout here is Shodan herself, played by the same actor, Terry Brosius, who played her in the 1994 original and the sequel. She's lost none of her arrogant charm or the creative insults, and the way she calls you an insect is just dripping with contempt. It's fantastic. In terms of performance, I really didn't run into any problems. The game runs in the Unreal Engine. I noticed no stuttering, no graphical issues. It was basically bug-free outside of some bouncy corpses after loading a save file sometimes. I can't speak for anyone else's experience with the game, but for me, it was really solid. With all that said, if you're interested in an old-school experience with a modern coat of paint, then you would probably enjoy System Shock. For all the horror games it went on to influence, it's actually not that scary. More of a romp through a space station-inspired haunted house. There's some tensions, but not a lot. After being through Dead Space, it's really not a big deal. As long as you're willing to meet the game halfway in terms of some of the complex controls and the small amount of hand-holding, this is a really good remake of one of the most important but archaic and hard-to-recommend titles of all time. Uh, you're going to end up having a lot more fun with this version than if you had decided to just go back because it does not work well. The old version is not shiny. It does not handle well. It does not really feel great to play and this version does like to be frank i was really excited to play this game and i really enjoyed it this is one of the all-time classics and i absolutely love it the only reason i would tell somebody to stay away from it is the lack of hand holding and the really complex controls those things they're not gone they're still there the controls are vastly improved and there is difficulty level management but if those are your problems uh this is not going to do a whole lot for you if you can get past those things and i think most people probably could i certainly can this is a fantastic game i can't recommend it enough i'm so happy that a playable less weird version of this game exists because it's just one of the all-time greatest gaming experiences and such a huge influence on everything. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.